Okay, well we're here and we're on location and we're at Bedfont Lakes today, which is just past Heathrow Airport, which is obviously, as some of you might know, is just past um, central London. For those of you sitting on your couch thinking, I'd really want to do wildlife, but I just can't, there's no wildlife around here and whatever, get up and go to your, your local park. That's all you need to do. Anywhere that's got trees, one big top tip actually, if you can find somewhere that's got water, you're going to find wildlife. Yeah, so go there. Just be patient, all right? Sit there, have a little, don't have to necessarily take your camera. Just sit there, see what happens, see what moves. See if anything has got like a routine, you know, if birds are perching, nesting, anything like that. I come to this place a lot, so I know the place like the back of my hand. I know where certain things are and whatever. If I want to find rabbits, I know where I can go and find rabbits. Might have a bit of problem with that today, as it's a boiling hot day and it's quite busy in the park, so. They might not get them until later on. Um, but like I said, I'm just going to show you now how I get prepared um, before I start taking proper shots. I've got my 40D, like I said, um, with my 70 to 300 on it. Um, keep that lens on your camera every time you're walking around because you never know what's going to fly past or walk past or run past or whatever. Um, you can't, like I said, getting prepared. It can be difficult getting prepared because you don't know what's going to happen. But we're out, the sun's out, so I'm going to take a couple of test shots. Over there, we got um, a little bush. Don't even know if the camera see that with the little pink flowers on. So I'm going to focus on one of them flowers and I'm going to adjust my settings around getting a nice exposure for them flowers. Um, I shoot in manual. I always shoot in manual. Um, I also shoot in raw files. I always shoot in raw files too. It's easier to um, develop your photos in Lightroom and Photoshop if you use raw files. They're bigger, but it's worth it. Um, my main priority is gonna be to get my shutter speed as high as I possibly can and work around that. Like I said, we're shooting wildlife today, so if things are flying around or if things are running around and stuff, you want a high shutter speed to freeze that moment in time. The higher your shutter speed, um, the more successful you're gonna be at freezing something that's moving quickly. The lower your shutter speed, it's gonna be a blurry image. Um, aperture wise I'm going to try and stick to f8 if I can depending on what the shutter speed I can get up to on f8 it's a really bright sunny day so I shouldn't have any problems getting a decent shutter speed and ISO wise again as low as you can the lower the better 100 if possible 200 maybe up to 400 if I need to um, but top priority shutter speed so let's have a little test shot I'm looking at the um image of the light meter and that was just how I like it to be fair maybe a little under I like to be one stop under on the light meter and that's two stops under so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drop my shutter speed down one and take another shot And that's much better. Just so you can see, I'm going to literally turn this right the way down and show you what a really overexposed shot would look like. Okay. Again, the colours are really um, blown out. The greens are really blown out. You can't see the pinkness of the flower. They're just white. And that means you are overexposed, which is bad. If it's blown out, throw it out, all right? If you have to do anything, try and get it underexposed slightly if you can. You can always bring it back up, but it's very hard to bring it back down. Next step, let's go and find something to shoot. I've actually got a photo opportunity now um, with these guys. Like I said, your swans can be um, quite brazen, especially if they've... Uh, got young and stuff they can be quite and um, not aggressive but protective you know so you need to respect them you know I have some shots now I'm gonna do some headshots um, of mum and dad and then maybe a couple of close-ups of the signets and then we're gonna break the fisheye out and I'll show you how I approach um, wildlife photography with fisheye lens so I'm gonna move you around here The sun is directly on you there, isn't it? A bit of a silhouette going on. I've got my lens down to 70mm. And 
and just, I mean, when you've got time like this, take your time to get in focus, you know, really um, get in focus on the subject, he's really looking right at me here, so, find as well if um, you want to really enjoy any wildlife shot, try and hold out until whatever you're shooting is looking at you. Yeah, it, just, uh, you know, it gives you the picture a bit more of a wow factor, I suppose. So he is still grooming. Let's get one of them. Oh, nice, he's done it again straight away. Bam. Look at me. Zoom in now. Try and get a bit tighter in his head. And lovely. Beautiful. Now, like I said, it can be hard using a fisheye lens. But we're going to break that out. And I'm going to show you how I go around. Taking pictures with a fisheye lens of wildlife can be risky. <clears throat> I'm going to be as respectful as I can. I'm just coming out into the shade. But at the moment, everything seems to be chilled and relaxed. So, okay, you can see the swan there. I've um, I've got my fisheye lens on. I'm in pitch black. I'm using an iPhone. I do apologise. I've done another test shot to make sure my exposure is good because I've changed lenses. I'm on f8 and I'm not even going to look through the viewfinder with this because I need to get so close to him. Um, I don't. I need to ideally keep an eye on him. And whatever. It is a bit of a spray and uh, prey technique, but you never know. Sometimes you get really nice results. Okay. So fish eyes on. I'm going to approach this one with caution. I'm on a continuous burst, I'm just going to burst um, a few shots underneath, pointing up to him, changing the views, and we'll see what we get. And that made for some really interesting shots. You now he done us a bit of a favour there and brought his wings up. I backed off a little bit, but there was no hissing. He's not really that, as you can see. He's getting on with his daily business now. Just uh, eating grass. Nice. So let's move on and see what else we can find. A few other tips when you're taking wildlife photography is be patient. Um, I'm in a little spot now, you can see he's sitting down by a lake, this is an old fishing swim. Um, we've got lots of dragonflies and that flying around down here that I can, you know, take some shots of. Um, but yeah, I mean the key is to be patient, you know, not everything is going to be like the swans there, they're not just going to sit still for you and let you get real up close. And this is where you really get your eye in, this is where you start learning how to be quicker, you start learning to get your focus. I always shoot with a manual focus. Um, yeah, my shots aren't always completely 100% and I mean that's just life, but I find that it's just more, it's not as frustrating if you're using autofocus and you're trying to autofocus and it focuses on something that you don't want it to focus on. Um, especially if you've got a fast flying bird or something like that. Um, I'd rather it be my fault than the camera's fault. Um, for not getting the shot, at least then I can blame myself, um, rather than getting frustrated with your gear. And like I said, we're beginners, um, it's a journey, and I haven't got the best equipment at the moment, so I have to make deal with what I've got. So I trust myself a little bit more than the equipment I've got at the moment. Um, also, when you're out doing it, you know, don't be frightened to take some landscape shots when you're in a place like this. You've got the sun shining, um, you know, it, it's. It's just an opportunity. Make the most of every opportunity that you've got. Um, I watched a film yesterday and, and one of the lines in it was human beings are, are more about having now than actually being. And I don't know, I just find in situations like this when you're out, the sun's out, you're in a lovely place. And 
taking pictures and stuff, you know, it's it's all about being and you know, I don't know, maybe it's one of the reasons why I do it. And a uh, bit of a bit of a softy sentimental moment though, you know what I mean? But anyway, I'm gonna take a little landscape shot of where I am here and hopefully get some of these dragonflies and stuff. But it's a bit difficult when I'm talking to you and you know and stuff so I'm going to shut down the camera for a little while and take some shots and show you what results I get just from sitting in this little spot. I'm going to put you down here just so you can see. I'm going to get a nice fish eye shot of this little area and then concentrate on getting some of these dragonflies. There's a few birds keep flying past and that as well so who knows hopefully we get that. But like I say number one thing be patient you're going to get frustrated that happens to all of us, you know, it happens to me all the time, but, you know, just stick in there and you'll get the shots that you want. A really good tip when you're out and about. Use your ears as well as your eyes. You can hear that, there's definitely a bird very close by, whistling away in a tree. Um, when shooting birds up in trees, to make sure that you readjust the camera settings because you're shooting up into the sky so your exposure could be off. So get a good test shot, find a spot in the top of a tree, take a test shot and um, work around that. It'll get you a little bit closer than if you're shooting say a rabbit that's hiding in a darkened bush going from that to then shooting a bird that's up in a tree that's right near the actual skyline. So. Yeah, use your eyes as well as your ears, but always keep your eyes peeled, you know, because um, wildlife's everywhere and it can fly past you in a second and you've just you've got to be ready for it, you've got to be ready for it. Otherwise, it's a wasted day. That's it, that's as much time as you get really. As soon as they start hearing that shutter go off, it doesn't take long for to find out. I think, I don't think you can see from here, but there's a little log just down there. I think there's a little burrow there, so. But, um, there you go. See, now, I know now, next time I'm here, keep an eye on this little area because like I say the more times you go out and the more times you get to know the surroundings where you're going you start getting to know um, just see another one actually he's just somewhere in there as well you start getting to know the habits of um, whatever you're shooting so and like I said the more you shoot the more you improve you can't get any worse by um, keep shooting so and for today I'm gonna to call it a day because it is roasting hot and I'm hungry but um, I hope you've enjoyed the video so next one I'm gonna try and get out we're gonna try something different I'm not too sure what yet but it won't be wildlife it could be landscape stuff it could be um, model stuff 
could be some long exposure stuff, but um, for now, poos and uh, keep shooting, guys. Right, we'll take this journey together. Later.